So Jacob is a specialist registrar in general adult psychiatry at the South London and Maudsley NHS Foundation Trust. And um, Jacob worked with us at the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare, really spearheading something called the, the Green Walking Project. So Jacob, I wonder whether you could just tell me a bit about you know, what the Green Pro Walking Project is. Describe that for us. Thank you. Uh, so thanks, Livia. Nice to see everybody and thanks for having me. So the Absolutely. Green Walking Project or the Green Walking Initiative, um, as it's known, uh, sort of has two stages. It had an initial period where with the Center of Sustainable Healthcare, we looked to basically see how possible it was to introduce something like green walking to psychiatric inpatient services. And I think we were aware that there was a lot of discussion around social prescribing and that there's a lot of focus on community work. But I thought it felt very important to start integrating that and seeing how possible it could be to also do that with inpatient services. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the, the primary aim of uh, the Green Walking Initiative is ultimately to advocate for a right to green spaces for psychiatric patients, which often have their sort of right to move restricted through the Mental Health Act. I think very much coming to terms with the reality that people don't have access to green spaces readily. But that also is coupled with the kind of irony that a lot of hospital sites are often adjacent to, if not on green spaces. Mm, and so yes. I think the, the, pro the, the project itself has a kind of advocacy element to it in terms of trying to help people understand that changes are very much possible and often those resources are very much available. Um, it's just a question of trying to put it into action. Uh, and so the project itself initially had a kind of an initial year where we found eight trusts who signed up into kind of doing a basically a pilot, pilot, pilot trial Mm -hmm. um, where they worked very closely with us and effectively did um, a sort of feasibility examination of what it would be like to start a green walking group on a psychiatric inpatient ward. And that sort of came to a close. Um, and at this point now, it's just a question of basically promoting this idea more widely and knowledge sharing and creating a community around this idea and making it sort of more accessible. And again, being aware that mm -hmm. these things were sort of are very much sort of bread and butter part of occupational therapy for, for decades. And I think part of mental health services for decades, but somehow mm. we've forgotten about it, but yeah. we just need to come back to it. Great, thank you. That's a really full description of, of the project. So um, very briefly, because we don't want to labor this, but can you just briefly outline kind of what impact the project had on the patients and staff in the organization, do you think, or the organizations that you work with? Because I know you work with, they work with quite a few through the project. Yeah, so the, I think the thing that we saw from the very beginning was that what um, because green walking is so simple, it offered us a lot of opportunities to think about what it means for something to work well and what does it mean for it to be kind of digestible and easily mm -hmm. integrated. So from the very beginning, what we saw was that we wanted to have support from the OTs and that to yep. sort of very much support occupational therapists to doing that while also making sure that you have the institutional backing of psychiatry. Mm -hmm. So we got the RC Psych to sign up, the RCOT and the Royal College of Nursing. Um, and then I think we just saw that there was a lot of appetite for it if you felt like there was a kind of atmosphere of inclusion and sort of mutual support. And if you looked at the actual experience of people, I mean, it was just really remarkable. And I think it's really important to point out that these are kind of changes which are very difficult to capture with numbers. Mm. Um, it's very difficult to get people to come back. And I think there's also a problem here where we try to do clinical work and clinical change. It sort of belabors the point if people have to come back from a walk and then do a, do a questionnaire and, and sort of examine their depression scales. And, and I think this question, I'm, I'm not suggesting that these don't have their place, but a lot of the richness of what people observed was just sort of experiential, um, that mm. people would talk about quotes of how amazing it was to be off the ward, people who lived locally to the area, we're saying that I've never I've lived in this area for 10 years and I never knew there was a green space around. Um, and I think the staff also noticed, I mean, the staff who went on the walks would always come back and use words like transformed mm. um, and, you know, unbelievable. And again, it's just very difficult to capture that in numbers. And so I think that's another thing that we learned is about trying to grapple with how do you represent these like very real qualitative experiences. Um, and we didn't, we didn't focus on sort of quantitative changes because it wasn't a research study, um, but we were really struck consistently by how much both patients and staff felt, you know, were using really kind of beautiful descriptors of the experience of something that was, you know, a 45 minutes in the, in the course of a single week. Mm, so perhaps focusing a little bit more on kind of the process rather than yeah. outcomes sounds quite interesting. Just wonder whether you could just say something very briefly about um, 
the process of embedding this initiative in exi an existing care pathway because I know that that's that's part of the that's going to link partly to what's the what's what the what um the NHS England want to do in their project as well what was your experience of trying to embed that first of all within pathways and also the system <laughs> at a large level <laughs> I think I think um this was a deeply humbling experience for everybody who was involved in it I mean mm. you can't get much simpler than a green walk um in terms of a kind of clinical intervention yes and um, it was a huge amount of energy to do it well it required a lot of long-term commitment um, mm -hmm. The funding wasn't so much of an issue, but you needed to sort of have a kind of ring fenced approach towards making sure that staff felt supported, that staff felt like they had the time and that they were listened to. Mm -hmm. But it was, I mean, it was really striking to me. And to this day, I, I mean, I probably won't forget the lessons that it's taught me, but, mm. you know, even something like a green walk, we were struck that even after four or five months of being on a ward, the rest of the staff who weren't directly involved were still sort of surprised that it was there and so the idea that you integrate the idea of integrating anything even something as simple as a green walk takes a huge amount of work i mean some mm. of the lessons we learned about we made sure that the medical director the head of occupational therapy or the ahp for the trust and, and as well at the ward level that everybody was aware of this in the first place and that was our kind of initial effort to make sure that we sort of tackled this question of integration, but even then, I mean, within a couple of months, people were saying that they didn't know there was a green walking group on the ward. And that really, it, it took a huge amount of effort from everybody involved and it required endorsement from all sort of levels of the kind of institutional hierarchy to keep it afloat. Um, another thing I think we felt was really important was that at every site, places that tended to, it was this incredible effect where at certain trust sites, if you had someone who was really inspirational and really motivated and they felt mm -hmm. protected and they felt like they were also tapping into this community that CSH had created, I think community is really important. I agree. That you, you did an initial intervention of the green walk, but then all these things flourished out of it. Like, why don't we do a horticultural project? Why don't we sort of bring this to other wards? And you really just, you have to be really humble in anticipating what comes of doing one thing very well. Mm. Um, and so again, I think it's, um, and I think the last thing I would say is that the fact that this was eight trusts working together and there was a sense of that there was a kind of wider community stretching across England working on it at the same time and they could also feed back into themselves was really valuable. And I suppose perhaps something like today is the beginnings of a community as well. And so I think it's, you know, don't, <laughs> this idea of don't make extra work for yourself that the community might already be there. Fantastic. Yes, and that's part of what we are trying to do today. And uh, I think, yeah, again, another encouragement really to join join the network just to kind of really make sure we can keep in touch with each other, I think. Great. Thank you, Jacob.